بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good evening dear viewers ladies and gentlemen Hello and welcome Dr. Mohamed Al-Shif Your host of Elixir of Life is kicking another inspiring and informative episode with our distinguished guest aiming to explore new frontiers and to discuss very important topic Today we'll discuss cystic fibrosis Please stay tuned for a special episode Once again, welcome to Elixir of Life. Our next segment will be quote of the week. Stay with us, don't go away. Once again, welcome back to Elixir of Life. Now we are coming to the most important segment. Our episode theme is cystic fibrosis. It is a genetic disease that causes recurrent lung infections and limits the ability to breathe over time. In people with cystic fibrosis, a defective gene causes a thick, sticky buildup of mucus in the lungs, pancreas, and other organs. In the lungs, the mucus clogs the airways and traps bacteria leading to recurrent infections, extensive lung damage, and eventually respiratory failure. In our episode, we will discuss very important agenda. We will talk about cystic fibrosis, uh, about etiology, about clinical features, diagnostic methods, and state-of-art therapy. It's my honor and pleasure to present my distinguished uh, and esteemed guest, Dr. Wadha Hilal Utaybi, consultant, pediatric pulmonary. Uh, and sleep uh, medicine and head of uh, pediatric uh, pulmonary section at King Fahad Medical City. Welcome, Doctora. Thank Wadha. you, Dr. Mohammed. Good evening for you and for all the audience through the Saudi Channel too. And I would like to thank all of them to give me the chance to highlight about this subject important about Excellent. cystic fibrosis. Excellent. It's our pleasure. Doctor, without further ado, we'll let's start by just, you know, defining uh, cystic fibrosis. We would like to know cystic fibrosis in a nutshell. So cystic fibrosis, we have to know this is a genetic disease and it is inherited secondary to there is <coughs> a deficiency in the protein which is affect transport of all the salt uh, through the gland which is the exocrine gland. So you will find they have a problem in uh, holding their secretion. So usually affected in multi-organ system. Usually the common is respiratory system and uh, can affect also in the reproductive system and also in the gastrointestinal system. So it is a multi-systemic disease? Yes. Excellent. Doctor, can you shed more light about the uh, pulmonary or lung involvement? Uh, can you show us in the model how does it you yeah. know, affect you know, the Yeah, you know, the most important uh, organ... Can you explain the anatomy of the lung? Okay, yeah. so, mm. You know, about the lung, it will start from uh, upper respiratory, which is the nose. Excellent. And actually, it will affect on the nose, but not at the beginning, later on. Then after that, you know about our respiratory start with the trachea, then divided into the bronchi, then entering into the uh, lung, we can divide it into two. Dead space, which is from the trachea and the branches of the bronchi. When it is entering the lung, you will find there is many blood fizzle and it is spongy-like, but there is uh, inside it is many bronchiole. Uh, okay. bronchiol. I hope this is, is a clear for them. Hmm. And uh, terminal blood uh, fizzle can supporting. Can you zoom in? Uh, okay. uh, you will find the end of uh, 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 dividing of the bronchi into bronchiole. There is many blood fizzle, which is responsible uh, for uh, transport of uh, gas exchange happening there. 
Excellent. The problem with the cystic fibrosis, when they have accumulation of that secretion, it will become very sticky and very thick, so prevent the lung doing the important job, which is gas exchange. Excellent. So these are the airways, okay, that the bronchioles uh, or bronchi, uh, it will be uh, blocked or clogged by the mucus. Yes. It will be st sticky when there is a lot of secretion sticky there, but what will not happen with mm. the one who is good compliance or doing what we will talk about during mm. the treatment. But the problem with them, their secretion, it will be very sticky and it will be very thick. So it will be uh, blocked the upper and the lower airway. So when it is reaching to the terminal bronchiole, it will be accumulated of that mucus. So there is no gas exchange. Excellent. So when there is no gas exchange, the lung actually will not do the main job of it is which is the gas uh, transportation and transmitted the oxygen to all of the body which we are needed and it's very important to the fight understood from you that very well the pathophysiology of cystic fibrosis yeah. okay. hmm. uh, at the beginning when you say it is a genetic disease so that's mean it is inherited disease and the mood of the inheritance is very important it is autosomal recessive so once we have uh, a child who suspected to have cystic fibrosis and we diagnose that by other method we'll highlight it on it later on so we have to do genetic screening or hmm. to detect what is the gene he have it once it turned to be positive, we'll do screening to the father and the mother. W and the other thing, sometimes the family, they ha don't have any gene defect. There is something we call it a mutation Mutation's of that. But huh? Yes, it's very important. And they are lucky if they're able to detect it. Before, it was easy to be missed, the children who have cystic fibrosis, and they will run the life, and they have recurrent chest infection. They will have difficulty, mm -hmm. breathlessness, admitted to the hospital, staying to the in ICU and they have failure to thrive, failure to gain weight, and he's not willing, even when he ch reached to the childhood age, he will be absent from the school. Excellent. But now, with the advanced medicine, and we have subspecialized physician in pediatric pulmonology, even adult pulmonology, it's very easy to detect them. The lucky one, who's the one diagnosed early in the childhood, they can um, live the life like the normal. normal with yeah. the, yes. Excellent, doctor. So you mentioned there's it's a genetic disease and autosomal recessive. Can you just, you know, explain more what does it mean like autosomal, you know, recessive, okay? What's the p uh, probability or chance that, you know, if the one uh, parent is affected? Yeah, uh, autosomal recessive, that means when there is two couple and they have one child uh, who have the disease, the re risk of the recurrence is 25% for each pregnancy. Okay, risk that of recurrence, yes. 20% with yeah. each pregnancy. After, detect what is the type of the gene that child have, and to detect is both of the parent are carrier, or only one of them is the carrier. Mm -hmm. So, so it is the better thing is to refer them to the genetic, mm -hmm. and the genetic, they will discuss with them what is the mood of the inheritance. And sometimes we have many cases, just only it's a mutation. mutation so a mutation, yeah. the risk of the recurrence, it will be unlikely and rarely. Excellent, but important. usually it will be like this. And uh, even if it is autosomal recessive, I, I would like to give the hope for all the family, there is another way to avoid Great. to happening for the second child. Excellent. But that's why actually, you know, the problem in our society, it is not a problem, this is our culture, mm -hmm. that they will marry from the can each relative. Regions. Society are regions. Re region different than the other. So it's better to detect what's the common gene for that. And you know, it is not only in Saudi Arabia or in the Middle East, it is also common in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in there is common for them more than East. But now, maybe because it was underestimated before, you know about it, actually not. We will abdominal surgical and mm. they will open and they will make surgical intervention or they dissect uh, part of the intestine and they will find there is accumulation of uh, mucoid there. But the reason for that, it is related to the cystic fibrosis, leading 
to delaying passing uh, the meconium from the abdomen. Is it unnecessary surgery or this is? Uh, it is unnecessary surgery actually because there is simple way. They're just only they can evacuate that. Excellent. And uh, there is other method of that. And they should think about consult Excellent. the pediatric pulmonology and do sweat chloride for him, do for him other investigation to diagnose the so disease. Yeah. So high You can alert. avoid that. So index of suspicion should be okay. Yeah. So what other clinical features here? The other sometime, if the child doesn't have this low birth weight and they suspect other my kids, they have the same weight, which is less than a three or less than uh, 2.5 kg. Usually the mother, she mentioned there is a lot of salty crust on the forehead of the child. Oh, okay. Or the mother mentioning that when I'm kissing my child, he is salty. salty. This is uh, also. Uh, other presentation and also in the first 40 days you will notice he have cough okay. it doesn't mean he have runny nose and the other you know some children they will have I don't want all to be Dry worried cough. about it but it will be wet cough with a lot of sputum oh, what sputum? yeah okay. it will be very wet in natures and he will have difficulty breathing and uh, feeding for them the, they have special criteria they have they are hunger child because they want to uh, drink milk a lot, but they were not gaining weight. Even when they are overfeeding, they are not gaining weight like the normal. Why? This is usual. The reason for that increasing the basal metabolic rate for them. Okay, the other sorry. thing, when they are drinking the milk, they have a problem in their absorption. Yeah, so okay, they need great. a supportive therapy. So whatever they will take, they will pass it. It's not absorbed. It yeah. will just. Uh, the okay. other thing, the mother she will notice when sorry when he pass his meconium, it will be very large, offensive. Uh, smell. smell. I huh. mean, it is very bad. The other thing she will notice when she uh, when she wash it, it will find it. It is oily, difficult. Oily. She need more soap to clean it. That indicate we have to rule out. Maybe it is not only the oily stool. It sh doesn't mean it is a pure cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. Sometime when they have pancreatic insufficiency, it will be oily. oily but okay. correlating all together, so advise all of these symptoms to seek a medical advice to go to the pediatrician specialized mm -hmm. uh, to give him all of the right information. Excellent. The good historian is the mother. Anything mother. worry oh. about it, she should immediately go to the hospital. Great. Doctor, what's the age of an onset diagnosis? If not diagnosed during, uh, during the neonatal period, you know, what will be the uh, uh, usual onset of the disease? Usually in the first year. First they will year. Yeah, first year they will have recurrent cough, recurrent admission to the hospital. And when during the hospitalization, it's difficult to, when they have chest infection like a bronchopneumonia, difficult to be treated. Uh, usual, the other thing, uh, symptoms stay for a long time. The other mm -hmm. thing is clear, very clear, never you find cystic fibrosis is uh, uh, good uh, growth. They will have not gaining weight well. Okay, so and the other thing, thrive, yeah, mm -hmm. their habitat, it will be normal or better than the normal, but they will not reach to the normal growth chart. Okay, but what about their uh, mental? Is it really affected the mental? No, they will have the, their IQ and their brain it's completely normal. The only system which will be affected, GI, a reproductive system and respiratory. respiratory. The main one and the common presentation usually is the GI and also the respiratory system. Excellent, great. Doctor, uh, is it co more common in males or females or there is no g gender uh, predominance? There is no gender difference. Before they are saying it's more common in the male and then female, but now they identified it is not related to the gender. Doctor, it from, were your, from your experience here, what's the, you know, uh, I think this we have more awareness about the disease. Uh, we, we've we seen more uh, symposia, more awareness days about the disease. What's now uh, nowadays the typical age of diagnosis? Do we like diagnose them early, we suspect them, or we you think that there is delayed diagnosis uh, across the kingdom? Uh, if you compare it in the last 10 years, I think all, because you know, uh, we are working King Fahad Medical uh, City. City, it is a tertiary hospital. So we're referring all our patients from other primary hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the orientation to the disease, I think from the social media, from the attending symposium, from the awareness they're doing, it's better than before. Ah, Usually we're receiving the case below than one years. It doesn't mean there are some cases which is underestimated. Mm -hmm. And you receive some cases at five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is missed cases. They missed have other cases. complications. Some they refer to the surgical. Mm -hmm. And they thought you have delaying passing meconium. Excellent. And they do surgical intervention. And the child end mm -hmm. with uh, 
uh, you know, the problem with malabsorption, and we call it short gut syndrome, mm -hmm. and they will stay on the total parental nutrition. And during the admission, they notice he's a growing strange organism or spiking fever. Then when, do they, when we do for him a sweat chloride test or radiological, we diagnose this is all related to one disease, which is cystic fibrosis. Excellent. But for the family, yeah. in the last uh, diagnosis, you have to st start the therapy. Excellent. Before we start, I've seen that. There is anything we call it false positive. Excellent. This is the point. Okay. The false positive if the child have malnourished or other having other uh, disease or have other endocrinological problem. So you should correlate it together. So this is will leave it for the clinical suspicion of the uh, of the physician. So we do want to confuse them. Sure. But uh, we get the symptom and the sign uh, presentation of the child and. Uh, the other thing, uh, what is the growth of the organism he have, if it is respiratory, uh, if he have GI symptom like uh, diarrhea, lose uh, bowel motion frequently, or we call it diarrhea more than usual, and special characteristic for this uh, lose bowel motion, large, offensive, oily stool, and uh, other parameter, the sweat is positive, and you send also the stool for uh, fecal elastase, it's positive, and you send for all added vitamin, mm -hmm. which is fat-soluble vitamin, all is below the normal, and the recurrent chest infection, uh, poor weight gain, so you have to ask for another gene, which is Middle East gene, okay. because depend on what you request. Mm -hmm. So you need the one who highly specialized to know where he's going. If the sweat chloride is positive and the child symptomatic and the gene is negative, so ask for another gene, what we call it the Middle East gene, so they will elaborate it more, and you start him in the therapy. There is um, uh, no risk from giving the chance to receive all the medication or, or the until treatment, you confirm, and until you, you until you confirm. Excellent. Excellent, Doctor. That's, uh, I, I brought this point because this is important. Diagnosis doesn't rely only on investigation, on history and clinical history and physical examination, yes. as well as the investigations you have mentioned. It's uh, we have to utilize our clinical judgment, as you mentioned, before we just, you know. Um, mm. Other give thing, Dr. Muhammad, the important thing is there is a benefit uh, if I start him in the medication or I ignore the disease because the genetic came to me is negative. negative. No, because if you make a balance for that, if I left him without a treatment, the complication, the mm. side effect, the risk of uh, lung failure, the risk of affecting his growth is more than what you are thinking. Excellent. So make the balance for that. So like it's like a question. Yeah, yes. because empirical or bridge, bridge to diagnosis. Yes. You start treatment and then it's very important, doctor. Now we are coming to uh, the most important treatment. What are the lines of treatment uh, or therapeutic options of cystic uh, fibrosis in uh, pediatrics? Uh, important in therapeutic, as I told you, the diagnosis and the treatment. It Excellent. is a matter. Diagnosis and treatment. Yeah. I think we'll talk about it more, uh, Doctora, if you allow us to, to go for a report about the second awareness day about cystic fibrosis at King Fahad Medical City Riyadh. To watch more details about this report, please stay with us. Don't go away. Children's Specialized Hospital. I would like to thank Saudi uh, Channel 2 for sharing for us our second day awareness day for cystic fibrosis. You know, the cystic fibrosis, it is a genetic uh, disease, and it is increasing now it's all over Saudi Arabia. It is well known. We don't know until now the incident of that disease, and we notice uh, our society now became very highly educated, and they share the event. This is as a simple education for the family, and to say for them thank for taking care of this, our children who is compl complaining from that disease. So we make this Awareness Day. The last year it was different from this year. Uh, and this year it will be all is a lecture content to educate them about the disease and for all the paramedical support 
about physiotherapy. You know about it and what is the and at the end of the day we will uh, also give the winner about the disease the one who have high compliance and reach to our target and we give them who have some genetic disease we appreciate for them and they believe that it is from the gut and they deliver uh, service for their children and they give them the good hope and they take care of them and uh, thank you for their coming to share for this awareness day thank you for all for you so Saudi channel too. so many organs in the body and it needs a lot of care from the parents and uh, special medications so we are really aiming to increase the awareness about this disease which is probably not that common now but we are seeing more and more cases so doctor this is a, a very common disease uh, how how can you prevent such a disease it's actually not common it is uh, you know it, in the, for example the, it's more common in the united states in the united states they have around 30,000 cases in the whole uh, country in our country i don't have actually statistic but our estimate is that probably we'll have every year 60 new cases of this disease uh, in king fad medical city there are around 50 cases uh, since the program started the program starts uh, like uh, you know five years ago so uh, it's about 50 cases and i think uh, probably more care about uh, the avail availability of medications, of uh, uh, also uh, you know genetic counseling, genetic disease, as a genetic disease, I think it will improve the situation. Yes, I'm Dr. Catherine Zellinger from K King Fahad Medical City. I'm a clinical pharmacist in the pediatrics department. Uh, what can you tell me about this uh, amazing event, International Day? Um, this is our awareness day and we're hoping to reach out to our patients primarily. Um, I'm a pharmacist and so um, my focus uh, of talking to the patients today is going to be on medication compliance and increasing their health awareness. Um, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that affects a small portion of the Saudi population. It's not just a European disease and um, patients get much benefit when they regularly use their medications. It really improves their quality of life and lengthens their life. About 20 years ago, the life expectancy for a patient with cystic fibrosis was only to the 20s or 30 years old, and then they would succumb to uh, major illnesses and die. So nowadays, they're living into their 40s, 50s, even some are in their 60s years old, and that's due to good health and medication compliance. Um, cystic fibrosis is a relatively rare disease. You know, statistics are really difficult to, uh, to gather inside the country, but we think it, one in maybe 350 patients, live births, 350, one in every 350. Because of the intermarriage, um, uh, we can um, get more uh, um, homozygous mutation, uh, where both the mother and the father have the defect in their genes, and then they pass it on to the child, and they'll have uh, expression of the disease, whereas the parents will just be carriers. So this is a risk of close family marriages. Any last thing you'd like to mention or advice you want to say? Well, okay, just like we're going to tell our patients, you get better outcomes from medication compliance. Understanding what role your medication plays, how it's going to improve your health, so you take it regularly. Once again, welcome back to Elixir of Life. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, back my uh, distinguished guest, Dr. Rod Halatibi, consultant, uh, pulmonary. Our interesting, you know, uh, discussion we posed on uh, treatment. 
purposes? As you know, the treatment is, is involved for the diagnosis and early management. So once we diagnose the child having cystic fibrosis or we suspect cystic fibrosis, and to educate the mother more what is needs. We educate the mother about the importance of uh, keep opening of the airway. So through the bronchodilator, and uh, you know the bronchodilator like fentolin, either we give him an inhaler or nebulization upon the age, upon the cooperation, uh, uh, and the oxygenated of the child is very important to keep him in mm. room air is more than 92 percentage. And uh, also why we give them uh, uh, fentolin and we give them some hypertonic saline. Hypertonic saline because mix it with the uh, bronchodilator uh, so it will enhance the child to cough more. Mm -hmm. So to excrete of the secretion or the thick mucoid uh, sputum. To liquefy the sputum yes. to make it more uh, liquid. Yeah. Okay. So what we will do, we will mix that hypertonic saline to prepare in the pharmacy and with the, uh, with the salbutamol and we give it for 15 minutes, then respiratory therapist uh, will do for him chest physiotherapy. What's the, the importance of chest physiotherapy, I think? Uh, as I told you, when it is the thing in the upper airway, we need, you know, when, you ha when we have uh, infection or you have a sticky sputum, as adult, you will cough. Mm -hmm. The child, the problem with them, also when they are cough, they will not the airway mm. to maintain that through the physiotherapy. So chest physiotherapy is the, is the obstruction and we good good physiotherapy. Yes. Yeah. Send it for culture to detect which type of organism there. Excellent. educate the mother and to show the technique. Yes. Depend on the age, each age there is a special mood of the physiotherapy. Excellent. In new nate usually, manual percussion or we give them some sponge, sponge and educate the mother where to keep the child in the position, postural position. Mm -hmm. uh, depend on the site and uh, encourage her about the time of the physiotherapy because we do want the child to aspirate. You know, the, if they are new nate or infant, is not related to the time of feeding or after the milk because the risk of aspiration is mm -hmm. there. So it should be before his uh, meal or before his uh, feeding and uh, and if he receives his answer fist uh, or the belt they will uh, put it around their chest and it will be vibrated for around mm -hmm. uh, 30 minutes and uh, then he will start off and to throw his sputum. Excellent. The other thing in hospitalization after we do physiotherapy, we send that good sputum for culture to detect which type of the organism. organism. Then we'll go with the direction of the treatment. If it is common organism, which is usually staph aureus or hemophilus influenza, need course of antibiotic up on the situation from seven to seven days to 14 days, then we'll discharge. Main worry from that is the growing strange organism that educate the mother how to give this in antibiotic. And uh, that antibiotic, he will receive it after we do for him good chest physiotherapy, good airway clearance, then he will receive that antibiotic. The important and the message for the family that you should not give him just only the inhaled antibiotic before uh, giving him good uh, chest physiotherapy because he will not mm -hmm. and uh, twice, twice per day, day. Mm -hmm. and we arrange it if he's in the school we ask them before he's going to the school and before he go to his bedtime excellent and uh, also regarding uh, his feeding nutritional is very important they notice uh, during his hospitalization they gain weight it's not a matter of gaining weight because in the hospital, you know, the children, they like to eat at home. Sure. But the reason for that, we are sin analyzing them. Some, not all the cystic fibrosis, they will have pancreatic insufficiency. You know, they have malabsorption. If their mm -hmm. pancreas is affected, 
they will not have good absorption for vitamin A and D and E and K. We call it ADIC, which ADIC. is a fat-soluble vitamin. vitamins. Yeah. So we give them as a supplement. The other thing, the problem with them, as you know, there is a problem in the enzyme of pancreas, so we give them as a supplement because it's not working from the mucus when it is accumulated in the pancreas and in the bile duct, it will make obstruction. So there is no ability to secrete or to passing that enzyme to the small intestine. So whatever he will take, he will pass it mm -hmm. because there is no supportive enzyme for digestion. So what we will do, we will give them enzyme, pancreatic enzyme, or we call it crayon. This is depend on the brand available. And we instruct the mother, before you give him the feeding, you should give him the crayon. It's As pancreatic enzyme replacement. Huh? Yes, uh, pancreatic enzyme replacement. Next and time. it is different. Abun there is a granule for that. And we ask the mother to give it before each feeding, even mm -hmm. if he is taking a snack. Unless there is some like the juice or the fruit doesn't need the enzyme, it's OK. OK, so, so that helps. So the, the line of treatment you mentioned, Doctor, just overview the line first. Therapy, with the uh, respiratory sub uh, supplement for nutritional supplement, Excellent. you need to receive a crayon, okay. And the other need, needs, need also vitamin like addic and addic, fat soluble vitamins, yes, as extra and uh, high calorie uh, meal. Mm. Uh, okay. If he is in two six, give them special formula with high, depend on the formula which is available with different flavor. And we will give them the special uh, the nebulizer or uh, I mean uh, saline and uh, ventolin to liquefy the sputum. Doctor, having said that, um, just to because you mentioned this is a multi systemic disease uh, requiring multi uh, disciplinary approach. What's the role of multi disciplinary approach in treatment of uh, cystic uh, fibrosis? Yeah. Uh, it is not working only for the pediatric pulmonologists. You need multidisciplinary team, and we have a special uh, program in King Fahd Medical City called Cystic uh, Fibrosis Program, which is involved the physician pediatric pulmonology, involved the respiratory therapist, uh, very important, clinical pharmacy check with the family about they know about the medication Excellent. how to use it uh, and also clinical nutrition is very important and also the social worker to support their visit and they are coming and uh, very important uh, their role and uh, all of these and also we have uh, a clinical coordinator mm -hmm. and they contact her in case the child became symptomatic or in cases of the emergency. Or no show in the clinic. Uh, yeah. no, the follow up in the clinic and uh, arranging of admission, availability of uh, uh, the bed, so avoiding waiting them in the emergency, especially Excellent. depend on uh, what they have. If they are pseudomonas, we're trying to ask them, no need to wait in the emergency like the other to avoid spreading of the infection to the other children in the ER, so they will contact the coordination and we will admit them directly in the hospital. Excellent. So in the clinic, how do you deal with this uh, patient with a colonizer uh, with uh, pseudomonas, which is the, we call it super bug or uh, resistant bug? Do you, in there are any special precautions? Uh, um, I could say outstanding service in the cystic fibrosis program. Uh, so the clinic usually, suppose it will be in Sunday in the morning. Excellent. So all the team, they have a meeting on the day before, like on Thursday. Uh, we meet together. We know how many cases they are coming, and we review all the file of the patient. And the clinical coordinator will contact all the family, confirm for us who's coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, then during the vital sign, the patient, with, during the clinic, the patient, he will go to the room in the clinic. Mm -hmm. And we have around uh, eight rooms. Each room, there is a patient, he stay there. The nurse will do the vital sign, and he will stay in the room. The physician will come and check him, uh, the patient, in the same room without moving. Only we are roaming around to the patient. And the, each patient have a card. Mm -hmm. This card is containing five items. So he know when he finished that card, he finished the service. Mm -hmm. So he will be seeing vital sign done, then he will call the physician, I will see the patient, and immediately seen by clinical nurse.
medication and give him the supplement, whatever he need. Then after that, the, our respiratory therapist will see him. And during the respiratory therapy, depending on the age, they will do for him pulmonary function uh, test to assess his lung. And they will get from him the sin dispute for culture. And also the clinical nutrition, they will see his growth chart and the follow up, it is increasing or decreasing. Then after uh, that, the clinical pharmacy double check uh, the medication availability. Then we'll give him the prescription and we'll give him the card for the appointment. Sure. If the child is uh, sick, immediately from the clinic to the ward admitted. And uh, if he's okay, he can be uh, discharged. The male who's isolated usually, the one who's growing pseudomonas erogenosa to avoid to contaminate it to the other who's still not so growing the, the okay. infection mm. to the other. Excellent. What are talking about a lot about pseudomonas, you know, colonization in the lungs. What are the, you know, risk of having pseudomonas? Okay. Yeah. It's very common, the cystic fibrosis, the, to have the pseudomonas erogenosa. But what is our aim in the program? To delay it, you know, when it is uh, stuck in the mucus or in the airway, it will stay there. Difficult to eradicate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, eradication, usually it's very difficult, but inshallah, we advise them a prevention is better than the so treatment. So we educate. You know, exactly. the pseudomonas, it's available even at home. Mm -hmm. But when it is with the immunocompetent, it's different with the one who has immunocompromise. The difference. So we educate all the family about that. And uh, we have an uh, yeah, educated uh, family. If they have this pseudomonas, she know he's uh, growing. The good thing, really, actually, about uh, our patient, you know, the mother first, when they are coming, how is the sputum? There is pseudomonas. There mm. is homophilus influenza. All they know about this. Yeah, excellent. That's this uh, is very I mean, good, yes. I think awareness is this to prevention. Yeah. Awareness, that's why awareness by whether it's awareness day or the educational materials about the disease, I think will uh, raise the bar for the patient, okay, and uh, family, okay, caregiver. They will discuss with the family. I think will help, you know, uh, ultimately will, you know, help the patient. Okay. Yes. Um, Doctor, we, we covered uh, nicely the treatment uh, plan. Anything you would like to add about treatment, multidisciplinary approach, to clinical program before we go? to talk about the uh, complications. Mm. Uh, this is the only thing. The other thing also, we put some stigma in the file of the patient, the compliance. compliance. How is the compliance of Excellent. the family? Is it good or poor Excellent. or fair? Because this will make for us the decision, the time of the follow-up. Excellent. would like to see him after. Adherence to treatment plan yes. is important. Uh, complications, what are the complications of the disease and how Fertility, which is in the male, is uh, more, uh, fertility, but uh, they can get uh, conceived later on with mm -hmm. the advanced medicine. Uh, that is the only thing affect their mentality. They are completely normal, and the other. But really, when the one have cystic fibrosis, he can survive. He can work. He can go to uh, the school like the other kids. Excellent. So they can lead normal life. Yes. Doctor, if we uh, diagnose early early diagnosis, prompt initiation of therapy, will it delay the complications or prevent completely? Hmm. No, we can delay the complication and we can uh, prevent uh, uh, with a good adherence. The important is good adherence, good compliance of the family or the education, excellent follow-up. They know about the disease, they can survive excellent. like the other children. So that's Before the like study, they said they can survive until 40 years. Mm. of the age without any other I think uh, hope uh, signal of hope of patient with cystic fibrosis to parents so this is a disease that can be under control can be controlled and we can prevent uh, complications and patient can uh, live uh, or survive like other uh, yes. patients uh, you know we are uh, reaching to the end of our uh, episode it's very interesting uh, but we have to come to the end before I conclude, I would like to, uh, you know, listen from you the take-home messages, okay, the key learning point from this very interesting interview.
family of uh, they are a unique behind that we don't know about it and you have to accept everything from the God and to believe that uh, when we have this disease we have to know about it and uh, the good advice or the good message you should receive it from your primary physician don't go and search through the Google don't hear the from because Google for the public so you can receive the message directly. If you have any question, go to directly to your physician. Um, adherence and the good uh, compliance between uh, cooperation between the physician and the family, I'm sure we will arrive to excellent outstanding surface or uh, good health in compared to the other childhood. The problem is the barrier between uh, family and the child and they feel he will not survive to the other. The other thing is we have to know that is um, uh, cystic fibrosis is not like the one before. All the medication now it's av available. We don't know about in the future. The future maybe they will discover there is um, a gene treatment. You know everything is changing now and then. So this uh, is the could be in the future. Yeah, uh, gene could therapy, be the okay. gene therapy. It could be there. Uh, many times we hear about some medication, it will correct the deficiency upon the type of the gene of the cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hope is there, uh, good compliance, and many of patients who have cystic fibrosis, they, they, they saw their children surviving like the other child when they adhere with them. That's why we make for them every time and the awareness day for the cystic fibrosis. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Awad Halatebi. And enlightening us about very important. Uh, with, that, with that, we are coming to the end of our uh, program. Thank you for joining us today. I would like uh, also to thank our uh, team, starting by uh, preparation team, uh, Rehab Khalitit, and our director, Abdullah Al-Wali'i, and uh, your host, Dr. Uh, my, uh, Dr. Muhammad Al-Shif. Uh, uh, we wish that you uh, enjoyed uh, watching our episode and found it uh, useful. And until next episode, we wish you a pleasant week ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Goodbye. See you next time.